Hi, this is Steve Graves, the uh, Department of Geography, and this video tutorial is about Riley's uh, Law of Retail Gravitation and some of the associated um, principles behind it. We'll start with a data set here. This is just a handful of um, towns that uh, I used to be familiar with uh, years ago, and this is a distance matrix which allows us to see the distance between any of the two towns. Here's a map for your convenience just to show you that here's uh, Shreveport. It's one of the largest cities in the area. Monroe is the second largest. And then there's a set of, of smaller towns in between. And the point of this entire exercise is to try to understand how uh, shoppers behave um, at least in, on a theoretical level, um, as they make choices about driving between uh, the various places where they may uh, consider to shop. Here is the population uh, data for each of the cities. Reports the largest, Monroe is the second largest, and then there are small towns in between. The first thing that you're going to do is to apply Riley's Law of Retail Gravitation. It's a simple formula that helps us understand the uh, spatial interaction between the cities. First thing you're going to do is uh, copy and uh, paste this down. You paste it down a few rows so this top row is in uh, is aligned with uh, row 15. The next thing you're going to do is just copy this one over all of all of this and I don't really think you need the latitude and longitude now if you don't want it um, uh, just so we can have some nice blank spaces. Okay so the first thing that we're going to do is calculate the retail gravitation of the blue cities on the red cities. And I'm going to start here uh, with the retail gravitation of Homer on Farmerville, so in this cell that's highlighted. In order to get that, type equals in the population of Homer. I'm going to press F4 not once like we normally do, but not twice, uh, three times and so that I just have a dollar sign in front of the C rather than 17. You'll see why we'll do this here in a moment. And then I want to uh, divide that, its population, by the distance to Homerville, between Homerville and Farmerville, which is a Homer and Farmerville, which is above there, and we want to uh, square that. That's our scaling factor. And I'll hit enter. And we have 1.87 units of retail gravitation. Going to copy this to the rest of the field. And notice that all of these numbers are reasonably small, with the exception of, of Farmerville's uh, Farmerville's retail gravitation on itself. So it's all 4,000 and we don't really want that. Uh, but nevertheless we will copy this all the way over to the rest of the cells um, and you'll notice that uh, despite the fact that we copied things um, up and across because we froze just the C value rather than the um, row value which would have been the number that it it stays and it works okay. The values we want to get rid of are these here on the diagonal because these are the retail gravitation of a city upon itself and we want to inspect the data here. So the larger this number is within this matrix, the larger the retail gravitation of the city in blue on each of the cities uh, noted above. So for Menden, Louisiana, its strongest retail gravitation appears to be on Homer. And if we grab the map over here and look at Menden, it's reasonably close to Homer. So shoppers from Homer will be attracted to Menden 
despite its small size. And let's see what it has a small retail gravitation on Monroe. And if we look, Monroe's at some distance from Menden. Next, we're, we're going to copy our matrix down uh, once again. And this time, let's put it in row, uh, let's say, 27. And um, I'm going to come over here. And we're going to grab this second, another uh, formula. And we're going to uh, do this. We need to uh, get rid of this data once again. We're going to put new formulas in there. Now that we have calculated our I values, which is uh, a measure of retail gravitation, then we can begin to ask some questions about, for example, shoppers in the smaller towns here and how often they are likely to drive, say, to Shreveport or to Monroe in order to do their shopping. Um, so we're going to do something called a standardized retail gravitation. See it right here. And it involves this formula. And it's basically the standardized uh, retail gravitation is the retail gravitation of one city divided by the same value plus uh, a competing city. And then the whole thing is uh, multiplied by 100. So uh, let's do uh, Monroe and Shreveport because these were the two uh, large cities in the areas that actually had malls. And people from all of these intervening cities, uh, basically here and here, all had to make decisions uh, which uh, of the bigger cities were they going to drive to. So uh, let's plug in some of these retail gravitational values that we have into this formula. So this starts off with Ri, which would be the retail gravitation of Monroe on Farmerville, which is 69. And then we're going to uh, divide that by um, the, we're going to divide that by uh, the retail gravitation of Monroe once again, plus the retail gravitation of its competitor which is Shreveport, and let's just multiply the whole thing by 100, which should give us 68. And we're going to copy this all the way across, repeat this, uh, but for Shreveport this time. So it's the retail gravity of Shreveport on Farmerville divided by that same value plus the value for Monroe times 100, and then copy this across. These numbers here don't really make a great deal of sense, but if you look here, say, at Farmerville, um, Farmerville is reasonably close to Monroe. Uh, Farmerville is close to Monroe. 68% of the trips um, from people who live in Farmerville would probably go to Monroe, and only 31% of the time would they go to Shreveport. Answer some questions in Moodle, and then come back and copy this down one more time. Uh, this time put it in say row 41. So I copied it down and we'll um, delete some of this stuff here. I grab uh, the formula and paste it in. And for this last formula, this is the breakpoint distance between just Shreveport and Monroe. Essentially, this is the distance that people are most likely to drive either to Shreveport or Monroe. We would use this uh, to essentially draw buffer zones around Shreveport and call that its uh, retail range. Uh, the area of attraction that Shreveport has versus Monroe and it is going to be bigger because Shreveport's a bigger city and Monroe um, uh, a fraction of its size will have a much smaller retail gravitational field and this is how we're going to calculate it. So uh, let's figure out how far uh, people will drive from Shreveport uh, between Shreveport and Monroe. So the first part of the equation 
uh, for the breakpoint distance is the distance between A and C. So I'm going to type equals. And then I'll go up here and get uh, the distance between Shreveport and uh, Monroe is 98.6 miles. Press the division sign. That brings us back down here. Uh, let's place a parentheses. Shoot, wrong kind. And then that is 1 plus square root of the population of city C, which is in this case Monroe, divided by the population of city A, which is Shreveport. And I think we need two uh, parentheses and press zero, or enter, and we get 66 miles. Let's repeat that one more time, but now we're uh, getting the breakpoint distance of for Monroe to Shreveport. Again, uh, the distance between the two cities is up here in the distance matrix. It's 98.6. And divide. Come back down here and it is 1 plus square root. Now the city C is the population of Shreveport. Uh, divided by population of city A, which is Monroe, and we close this with 2, and we have 32.2. If we add these two together, we should get the total distance between the two cities if we've done it right, and of course we have, and so uh, answer a few questions in uh, Moodle, and that concludes.